But before we get there, there is something important we need to also cover today. Then we have a conversation on uh, what was left over yesterday. As I begin, I want to assure you that planning to marry, thinking about marriage is not something simple, it's something healthy, and uh, it's something good, and you need to be intentional about your intentions to get married. To get married. As a... Uh, I'll look at a few things you need to consider before you get into this important step of marriage. Yesterday we talked about dating, how you can maximize from dating, and we talked about courtship, what you need to do. I want to bring up some of the issues you need to consider before you finally zero in on the right person to marry. The first thing you need to do is to reconcile with yourself, resolve your past. And I want to <coughs> tell you one of the mistakes most of us make before we move on uh, into marriage is to get into marriage with package. Many of us get into marriage with a lot of package. Of course, you will get some package, but as much as possible, reduce the package that you are carrying. And one of those is your emotional package. There is this habit that we make well, that we are used to. When you break up with your boyfriend or with your girlfriend, you are so hurt and you want to fix him, and you quickly move on into another relationship. You feel you miss somebody, and uh, two, three days down the lane, you are dating somebody. That is very harmful. Why? Because you have not reconciled with your past relationship, you have not moved on emotionally. You are still carrying that package within you. And what happens is that you judge the next person using the person you had in the past. You are still hurting and you will transfer your pain into the person you will be dating. And that's exactly what happens with marriage. First, go for counseling. Be reconciled with yourself. Maybe your father was an abuser. He beat your mother. He used to beat your mother. Go and get counseling for those things. So that you don't judge your husband using your own father. You don't see your husband in the lenses of your father. Ah, I know men. Men are the same. Men are like this, are like this using your father as a yardstick. Uh, something, when you move into marriage, make sure all your girlfriends, whatever they did to you, the other one who cheated you, got pregnant, when you never had sex, and etc. Reconcile your anger, resolve it before you move into marriage. If it needs counseling, go for counseling. Do a talk therapy, talk about it, and empty your pain so that you don't judge the next person using your past experiences. The second thing, look at the compatibility. Not every good person is fit for you. There are many good people very, very good people. But not every good guy is fit for you. Not every good girl 
is the right partner for you. They are very, very good guys, prayer warriors. And uh, you may be a prayer warrior, you come together as prayer warriors, but you discover there is a lot of chaos in your marriage. Because you are not compatible. There are temperaments. Uh, and when the temperaments are misaligned, you will have a serious problem in your marriage. Both of you pray, love the Lord, are sincere, you don't commit adultery. None is committing adultery. But you find you cannot eat. And resolve that. Be able to understand temperament. That's why I said yesterday, you must be able to start the women, start the men. Understand the temperament, how people behave, and uh, they are different personalities. Understand those issues before you make that commitment. Then, number three, you must also look at your financial compatibility. Mm. Are you financially compatible? There are some things that you may like and uh, you find those are not the priorities for your mate. Look at the, like on Valentine's Day, as you move around town, look at the things that the other likes and also the compatibility. There are some men who don't care about Valentine's Day. That's them. And if you find the value of Valentine's Day, this guy does it. It's okay, move on. Don't allow. Tell yourself, no, I think this thing won't work. <laughs> ah. And if you find the lady who values these things, they are too mundane for you, they will stress you in marriage. Mm -hmm. If you find it, no, I think. Before, that's why you should take some time in dating before you move into courtship. Then you have to look at financial compatibility and look at your backgrounds. Me, I am a VSRP, very strong rural people. I grew up in the countryside. There are things that don't matter much to me. Me at home, I am not complicated. Actually, I really detest that type dead. So I was on a good queen. It's me. I am a VSRP. There are things, there are characteristics in me which are weird, which even my children find weird. It's me. This is my background. And I cannot win it. For, my, for myself. This is how I grew up and there are some... When I think of a home, I'm thinking of a home in the countryside. Building a home in the countryside, having my cattle and gods. This is my dream as I move into life. Then you marry such a guy who is dreaming the village and uh, you grew up in the city and uh, you are thinking of protein, etc. There you are. You will get into crossroads. You will struggle in your marriage. You put him there in protein, buying your house in protein. Instead of growing flowers, he is busy growing his maize in the every corner. What would tell some good? Come on. Come on. I don't know you have flowers. I don't know you have flowers. I have been a person. So there are those realities that you have to consider. Then as a man, there's a book written by Otto Anderlin, Men of Steel and Velvet. As a man, before you think of looking for a wife, Adam, before he was given a wife, he was given some work to do. Look for something to do. Be a hard worker. I say to Sabbath and our later today, when you look for a boyfriend, check if there are some blisters on his hands. If there are none, this is Mama's baby. Tell ya, Mama, go and play with Mama, uh, Mama's baby. That's Mama's baby. 
He is not yet responsible. Life is hard. Life, let me be very hard. Life is hard. If you think things that are tough and solution, uh, when you go and eat in the cafeteria, a meal for 50 cents a day, that's not how it is in life. In life, things are hard. And uh, if you marry a man because he has a deep voice, Latest release in music. Who know uh, what happened between Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire? They have no statistics and uh, they know names, Cavani, etc. Those names they know, but they cannot feed you. So a man must be able to work. You must be able to check those things. Is this a guy who knows how to check to take his opportunities? Go to his home, visit him at his home. Don't just take a person. Go to his home where his parents are there. Check is there a garden that he does himself? Yeah. Uh, if there is none like that. That's a baby. That is baby Nana. Allow Nana to grow up. Let them put him on a cat. He grows up. Uh, because in marriage as a man, you need to work. Work hard. If a woman is hungry, let me tell you, she might not do very well in bed. She will struggle in bed. You have to work, and that entails work. Uh, if the guy is still working up after five, that's a baby. Allow the baby to sleep and grow up. But marriage requires men. And is this a man or a baby? Uh, there are other features that you also need to check. Does this man, does this lady have connection with the Lord? Mm -hmm. That's fundamental. Does he fear the Lord? Yeah. Check, there are some things that should be indicators. Does he have a Bible? <laughs> He's on Bible. And is that pipe marked? Mm -hmm. Check. Are there some, some marks on this pipe? If this pipe is just in cell phone, then it tells you Moko. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Moko. Mm -hmm. uh, check. Does he keep tight? Once in a while, just ask him, please, can you give me your envelope, your tight receipt for last year? 2024, please give me your title for 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please give it to me. If he cheats God, as I said, if he can cheat God, who are you? Mm -hmm. If she can cheat God, who are you? So those things are very, very <laughs> fundamental. That person must have connection, living connection with the Lord. And uh, Audrey Andelin says in his book, Men of Stealing Velvet, search for that book, even those who are married, search for that book. Very, very good book. Uh, that person should be able to protect you. A man is a protector. Uh, as a man, you have a duty to keep your body strong. Run, do some exercise with your body. Uh, show that you are a man and walking with 
your you should not believe somebody who is getting for a law. But let the woman feel that she is working with a man who can stand up for her. Not somebody who is lanky because you will have to fight for a marriage. You have to fight for your wife. Uh, not only physical, but you will also need to stand up for that woman, protect that woman. So stand up, be strong, and uh, as a man, do some exercise, wake up in the morning, exercise, run around, keep your chest strong, and avoid being sickly, except there's some conditions, conditions, there are asthma in life which you cannot prevent. But there are some conditions where every day, look at them for Exercise is strong. Uh, then the last two things that I will mention: the men must have a tent. You got to tell this is 2024. Abraham, Isaac, takes Rebecca into a tent. When he marries you, tell him, ask him, where is your tent? Where will I go when we go into your tent? Show me your tent. It does not mean that he has to buy a house before he marries you, but if that is possible, let him do so. But let him show you that he is on a road towards having his own tent. Don't accept a man who will put you in his father's home in the very, very, very first day and keep you there in his father's home and say, no, uh, I'm married now. Sissy, uh, keep it up with Mark. What about I'm sitting? Yeah, and then, uh, uh, the question has like this. You will fight with your aunties. You will go into a war with your sisters in law. Mm. Look, look at the background of the lady. What's her background? I told you about the life story. Uh, get the life story of the person. There are different cultures in different homes. My background, I am a very therapy. The way we were raised in my home, we would wake up, we never used to sleep our room in my home. That was the duty for girls. I would not sweep my bedroom. This is how I was raised. Four o'clock, my father would come, wake us up, we go to the cake pen, we go and inspire the cake. The girls would come and sweep our rooms. Us from four o'clock in the morning until around six o'clock, we are busy working. Was that right or wrong? That you may leave it to judge, but this is how I was raised. Whether it was right or wrong, this is how I was raised. Washing plates, never knew anything of that sort. We would never wash plates. What for? That's for girls. Cooking. We never, I never used to do that. That was for girls. Us who were too busy, too busy doing men's work. But there are some women who have been brought up in homes where the boys cook, where the boys sweep, where the boys wash plates. And uh, if you have not really had a, a very good discussion, she comes into your home, then she asks you to wash plates. So Delena, you are now Delena. Yeah. Plates, me, me cook for you. Where am I? And your mother as well comes and sees you cooking. Ah, mama, what am I? Ah, so you have a very good understanding of the background and look at how, it doesn't mean that we don't make that need, but you need to understand how that will influence your marriage. Thank you, let me end here. Right, let's have a conversation on what I've left inside. What I'll do 
I will uh, invite two people uh, who I'll make it into an impromptu debate. Impromptu debate. Uh, two people who say, please, uh, let's look for virgins, especially pastors. Let them marry virgins. I want two proponents. You come here, you argue your case, theologically, put your verses, present your argument. Then two will say, uh, no, we don't think so. I'll give you three minutes each. Three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, which means we will spend 12 minutes on presentations. Then after that, we will have about 10 minutes for question and answer. We may not resolve the issue here, but it will help us to have different perspectives. Right. And to volunteers who say, me, I want to present my case for those who say, ah, uh, if Asri Mana, Hokoyo Mana, stop. Right. We saw it would be one, one like penalty shootout. <laughs> and you, right. You shoot, somebody shoots, and right. Right. First, uh, those who say, as me, I insist, it's a virgin. Look for a virgin. Right, number one, you come. All right, I'm going to read the verse from Leviticus chapter 21, verse 13 to 15. Uh, I'm making an argument that uh, pastors, is they are in the line of priesthood, the Levites, what were the commands of God back then, which still stands today? So Leviticus chapter 21, verse 31, verse 13, is saying to a Levite, to a pastor, to a bishop who is leading a church. It says, the woman he marries must be a virgin. The woman he marries must be a virgin. These are not my words. He must not marry a widow, a divorced woman, or a woman defiled by prostitution, but only a virgin. It is the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a pastor, for self-respect, it is worthy to marry a virgin. Okay. If you don't marry a virgin, you are marrying what the Bible is saying is a defiled prostitute. What does the Bible mean by defiled prostitute? A prostitute is anyone who engages in sexual activity outside marriage. Okay. So if you do it before you are married, you are a prostitute. So a prostitute that repentant is still a prostitute that he repented, okay? Uh, it, it takes away the sin, but the effect that this one is no longer a virgin remains there. This is why God is saying it is shameful for a pastor to marry someone who is not a virgin. It's a must that when you're a pastor, look for a virgin. And you're not supposed to marry a divorced woman. I have a sister myself. She's 21. She's been married twice so far. She does not have a baby. And you can find and say, this is a girl. You're marrying a divorced person. It's a shame to a pastor. You cannot do that. Don't marry someone who's not a virgin. It's a shame to the work of God. Okay, imagine, how are we going to wait you in the church? Because this church believes that when you are a poor, pure virgin, we close the veil on your face, isn't it? So if you marry someone who's not a virgin, we're going to open that, and everybody's going to say that you're getting a second aid package. It's a shame, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> my name is Prince Maposa. Uh, I want to say, marriage, it was instituted before sin, yes. But even when sin came, it is still there to sinners. So being a sinner is violation of the law. So why are we only concentrating on the sin of adultery? to Levites or pastors. 
Anyone who doesn't retain the tithe is sinning. You should not marry if you, if you are to say. So because we are all sinners, even sinners who have not repented are marrying. And it's still, those who don't worship God are marrying. Even artists are marrying. What do you say to them? So my point is, every sinner by the name of being human is entitled to marry, whether a virgin or not, because it's sinning, both of you, men or women. A pastor who, who loves one who is not a virgin can marry that, that who is not a virgin. Why? Because it's love. It's love. You marry because you love her. You, you marry because you love her. And the love is defined on unconditional. You don't define love in your own perspective as a human. If you know how to love, go and learn to Jesus, who loved you in your sinful nature. So you can't define to say, I will marry someone who is pure. Go to heaven and find angels. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I answer to Fortune Lana. I'm not against or for the first speaker. I think I'm on my own side. <laughs> I think it is not logical for a university student to come to Solusi, attend classes, go for four years attending classes. Then on the examination day, you cry for a when you start to say, I was learning with form ones. <clears throat> what am I saying? I'm saying, as a non virgin, you can't be trodding the same pathway the virgins are trodding. So as a virgin, my pastor, for self-respect, stop trodding in the same way where non-virgins are trodding. You can't be dating a non-virgin for four years only to realize when you have gone to honeymoon that he was, she was not a virgin. Why were you walking in the same path? What that suggests to me is that maybe you are still a virgin because you lacked the opportunity to lose yours. I rest my case. Gentlemen, uh, my name is Achi. Um, I want to submit my thoughts on this subject, uh, which is going to affect both genders, male and female, but specifically on the issue of pastors uh, marrying virgins or not allowed to marry virgins. Now, I, I would like to come from a theological perspective. Uh, then I'll present my, my, my case. When you read from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 25, 26, and verse 27, the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved you, and gave himself for it. Verse 26 is saying, that he may sanctify and cleanse it, with the washing of water by the word, 
that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. The original plan of God was that men would live outside the boundaries of sin. But because of the temptation and fall, all humanity find itself in the mud, in the pit of sin. And everything was compromised, marriage also included. Now that man has fallen short of the glory of God. What do we do? Is that the end of the road? Christ came and he searched for, the, for his wife, the church, who was a warring with another man, committing adultery and fornication out there. Then he came and removed her from the pit of sin with that odor, that smell of sin. He cleansed her, washed her, then he present the same wife to himself, a glorious church. A woman who was sleeping around, the greatest of the pastors, one of the greatest pastors this world has ever seen. He came and paid the bride price, not to a virgin lady, but to a woman who was committing adultery, which is signified by the chapter of Hosea, where God told Hosea to go and look for, for Goma. That chapter was trying to signify the love of God that he has towards his wife, the church. So coming to the practicality of this uh, theological aspect, allow me to submit to say that in as much as we uphold the standards of purity and simplicity, God expects us to do that. But when that has been lost and we have lost that, what do we do? We follow the example of Christ who followed that adulterous woman and cleansed her and presented the same wife to himself, a glorious church and a glorious wife. Thank you. Okay, so the presenters, we are through with presenters. Right, if we are done with presenters, we can now open up for questions and uh, for the debate now, for, for the discussions for, to the floor. Right, that's a, a question. <laughs> okay, my question is, can one be a pastor while he's not a virgin? Thank you. Maybe we'll ask Tichara you have presented your thesis and uh, 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 the argument, I think you get the argument. She is saying, since you are in system of purity, uh, then you will get the other perspective. One to get both perspectives. Right. What's your perspective, Vatanda? Uh, thank you very much for such a wonderful question. Uh, and, and responding to that, I would say, if we go back from the Bible Genesis to Revelation again, you will find out that the principles of marriages, uh, the way they were presented, God did not even, when he was giving the Levites the, the prescription on how to choose a wife, he did not talk about the men's side. I, I am not sure the reason why, but in our modern world, I would want to conclude by thinking because the man is the one who pays the dowry. So therefore, he is the one who is buying the product and... <laughs> Um, uh, uh, okay, I'm saying that, that, that truth, the truth of the matter, whether we like it or not, as long as men are paying to have a wife, they are buying the product. That's the reality. We cannot argue that one. So I'm saying uh, a pastor should be a virgin and a Mary a virgin. If the pastor is not a virgin, that's my opinion, it's not written anyway, but in my opinion, if the pastor is not a virgin, he too should not take the post. Amen. Thank you. Let me have the other side of the, I think there were three proponents of the other position, uh, either of you, one of you. What's your take? Then we, right? Yeah. Uh, my take on this is, uh, when you are marrying, you are not paying for virginity. For virginity. 
but you are paying for the bride price. You must pay for that. He's a, she's a human being, not virginity. If you, you would think to buy, to pay because he, she's a virgin or not, I think we are lacking somewhere. A pastor should marry even a, a person who is not a virgin. And that doesn't disqualify him to be a pastor. Because the message of God is still there to make him a pastor. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe. Uh, right. Next question. I will sum up at the end. Right. The next one, there's a hand. Uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Siandarate. Uh, I'm against with the guys who are saying a pastor shouldn't marry a virgin. So your thinking is shallow and your theological interpretation is shallow. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, are yeah, withholding a law which fails you to withhold. <laughs> so by that, we are saying, it's like we are saying uh, we, withholding the law will purify you while no, not withholding the law will dignify, your, will dignify your dignity. So let me explain this by saying, Christ on uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, I'll read, but I say unto you, that whoever looketh on a woman to last after her, after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. So on the issue, uh, it differs on the uh, perspective of cultural background. Uh, the paying of a, of a lobola is not of buying the woman or paying for virginity, but it's of building a relationship with the other family. So when you are marrying someone and paying a bride, a bridesmaid or a lobola, it's not like you are buying her, but you are building a connection. That's why back in the old days, you were not paying 12 cows, but you were bringing whatever you could have or you had at home. So the issue of virginity comes to a place where we are saying, let's take the story of, of Hosea. Hosea was commanded to marry a non-virgin and worse, she was a harlot. So when you are quoting the verse, you are quoting on the scriptures of Moses. It was a cultural context, not a theological context. You're, you're, that's why you are interpreting it in a shallow manner. You're not a theologian. Let me sit down for now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. I think that's fine. L let's challenge the ideas without really hitting on the person. <laughs> let's keep it that way as we, as we debate. Let's make sure that we, it's a contest of ideas. Right. Thank you, thank you. That's great. Right. Now, let me have the two of you, the proponents, let me have your response. What's your response? What's your response? Right. Okay, thank you once again. Um, for the idea that uh, a pastor who is not a virgin should not take the ministry, uh, it will now contradict the whole concept of calling especially when you read the New Testament, when Paul says, we glory in this earthen vessel. When he was saying we glory in this earthen vessel, he was referring to human beings as the vessels that are being used by God to what? To, to spread the gospel. So he's saying we do not glory in this earthen vessel, but we glory in the power of the gospel so that the power and the glory might be of God. When you look at that text, it shows clearly that man in his fallen nature, that's why even when you read the writings of Ellen White, she comes up with an idea that God decided to use fallen human beings who have like passion with those whom we seek to save. The same people that you are seeking to save, who are lost, who are in the sin, we are in the same position. No one is superior than the other. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, then we can reach out to them in the context of the calling. When we do that, I believe that everyone, because if we look at all those people who were called to the ministry, Paul himself, he says, I'm the chief of sinners. If he was a chief of sinners, 
Then why did God qualify him to be part of the ministry? Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Let's let us Right. Uh, I will still respond on the issue of uh, paying Lobola. Maybe the culture in the bill is different in Shona. In the Shona culture, when you're paying, like I said yesterday, Pani Inunzimumbe Yechimanda, in acknowledgement that you have married a pure woman. So if we talk about culture, like you're saying, the modern culture, even the modern culture demands that a woman should be pure for that to be paid. It's the modern culture. Uh, so I would also say, yesterday we talked about the issue of bonding. Ladies and gentlemen, you may outspeak me and clap hands the way, all the way you want, but the truth is that bonding is real. That bonding is real. You never know when you're marrying someone who's not a virgin how much she has bonded to that person. And a pastor, you're always out on mission. You take a crusade somewhere there three weeks and she's left alone with that strong bonding for the person who's still in the same community with you. There is a lot of risks that you're throwing yourself at. And moreover, the value or the, the, the dignity that you're supposed to have as a pastor. Imagine I'm preaching here and somebody in the congregation has slept with my wife. What value do I have as a pastor? And therefore, it is recommended that a pastor should marry a pure woman so that you have your self-respect. Thank you. Let's clap in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Another last two hands or so come up and uh, make your question or what the submission. Uh, greetings, friends. Yeah, yeah, I want to side or to feel with my sisters here. Uh, there are many ways a high man can be broken. You know, athletics and the bicycles can make one lose her virginity. In the countryside, uh, listen, in the countryside, the world vision is doing wonders. They gave, uh, they, they promoted uh, um, girl child with bicycles, both primaries and the secondary school. So for me, I'm taking this point, let us be pure before uh, God. You know, even uh, the tainted person wants a pure uh, character or a pure status. When I marry, even if I'm not uh, pure, I want someone who is pure. I don't know why. I'm getting back to the question uh, that uh, is only uh, ladies who are doing, um, who are prostituting or who are adulterating, are they doing that things alone or they are doing with men? You find that you are a man here, you are seated. But out there, you are breaking other people's virginity. Here you come in the church, you want to marry a virgin. That's not fair. Right. So what I'm taking here, like to my sisters, both men and women, let us be pure. Let us uh, be pure before God and, and be faithful to yourself as well as it can be recommended by God. When he's seeing you, you are pure, you are upright. And if the vision was lost due to activities like bicycles, like, uh, like uh, athletics, wait, like athletics, I'm not certain, I'm not certain uh, how far true is that, whether these scient scientists, or I'm not a girl, but the scientists they confirms that that was is true, they can lose their high men through those activities. Now my question comes to my pastors who are saying you cannot marry someone who is not a virgin. So then, if it's uh, true that uh, one can lose the virginity through those activities, what then a position can we put them? Should we say they are not uh, pure or they are not upright when you are in, uh, in honeymoon 
Then you find that, uh, will you, I don't know the position you take there. So uh, help me there to understand. Thank, thank you. you, thank you very much. Because of our time, let's have the last three submissions, then we have the response, then I wrap up. Right. Okay, um, this subject of uh, Fijinit from yesterday, I have uh, realized that it is very important and very critical and has to be taken seriously and very carefully because to the listeners and also to the audience, um, we have different statuses as we are here. Some are and some are not um, to the both sides, men and even female. We, we have different statuses, so we have to take it seriously and uh, very carefully because sometimes it might harm also my life if I have gone through that. For example, uh, during the time of, um, of, of, of the, um, the mangoes, I looked at a mango tree, at a, at, a, at a mango under the tree. It was looking very attractive. And when I wanted to eat, I picked and only to, to realize that the monkeys had already eaten it. And uh, I felt bold and I'd thrown it away. I'd looked for another one which was fresh and I ate it and I was happy to eat it because it was fresh. To that one, uh, which was not fresh, I asked myself so many questions. What if uh, I get sick? What if I won't be held the rest of my life if I eat this one? I want to say to my fellow ladies, remember what happened to, to Tama with Amnon. When you think that I'm giving a love to him, you know many they persist and say you, you are LNG white, you, you want to complicate things. Don't do, don't do this, you see. But remember what happened to Tama and Amnon. After sleeping with her, Amnon hated her for life, forever. So that's what many do. They will hate you for life. That which is important on you has already been taken. But I'm not saying, again, there is no hope to someone who is also looking at me and we also uh, listening. There is hope for you. There is also second virginity. The Lord still loves you. To the one who is also saying, whether you're a pastor, whether you're not a pastor, if you are saying you don't marry someone who is not a virgin, it's okay you are saying that. But to someone who will say, I think it's okay, I can marry someone who is not a virgin, a virgin, no problem. It depends on your agreement. Now that the men, if they see that you have slept, uh, with men before, what they say, what's so special about you? Why are you refusing to sleep with me? What's so special? You are not a virgin. Refuse. You are still special. You can still start afresh. Amen. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, make your short one six minutes above uh, 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 our time. So, one, two, um, okay, the others I'll give you a chance tomorrow. I'll just give one, two, one, two, then we, tomorrow you must be there. Uh, make sure you're there. Pardon. Oh, yeah, the first one. Oh, oh okay, c c come first. Then I, I can write if you just tomorrow. Make sure it's short, less than a minute. Huh? I do not decide to get bored. Later. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Uh, allow me to say this. If you are not careful, theology will kill someone. I want to, to, to ask my pastor. <laughs> Concerning the verse you have read, that a pastor should marry a virgin, okay, I'm still single. It's relevant to me. What about to my other pastor? We are called in a different way. I was called before I get married. And you are called when you are married. And you are also married to a divorcee. How then can we connect? Can we say you are not called by God? And I'm called by God. How can we balance the two? Okay, it's fine. Can this only apply to pastors or to everyone? that you should marry a virgin, and you should be married being a virgin. If not so, what will the world do to this story about Rakab and Salmon? Rakab was a harlot. Salmon was a virgin. They got married. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, okay, that's fine. Let's make it shorter, even shorter than you. Just time. 30 seconds. Okay, my name is Tawanda Chitimbe. I want to, I want to ask probably the pastor to say, to say, um, let's say, let's say I'm married myself. Let's say you have a list of things that you look for in a lady. And then there's this other lady, she's not a virgin, but she ticks almost, maybe out of 10, she ticks almost eight boxes, but only two are what are missing. And then there's a, a virgin lady. She, she, tick, she hardly ticks up to five. Which one would you prefer? Um, I know, I understand. I understand that, uh, I understand. As a church, our position as a church we encourage young ladies and young men to be pure. But since we are living in a world of sin, it might happen that I have lost my virginity, she has lost her what? Her virginity. What would then, what should I do then? If I go to the Lord, I remember Isaiah 1 verse 18 says, come, even though your sins are as, as red as scarlet, come, let us what? Reason together. Once the Lord has declared me what? Forgiven. Then I can become pure. What's wrong is that once I am declared forgiven, is to go back and indulge in what? In sexual activity. There are people who, when they are forgiven, they then uh, dig a, a pit and, uh, and spit in the pit and never to come back to that, to that, to that lifestyle. As a pastor, I can... Personally, I can go for someone who is not a virgin, but who has repented and who's willing to make things what right in the future. Because remember, like what my sister said, here we are different, and there are some ladies who are no longer virgin. We need to give them hope as well. To, 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 they must know that God still loves them, and there's two chances with God. That's my sub submission. All right. Thank you very much. I want to say whenever we speak, we preach the ideal, isn't it? We always promote the ideal. But I just want to say um, the reality of life. Uh, maybe as a question, I'll leave these four questions, maybe so that we think through them and maybe discuss maybe tomorrow. If I am a pastor, I married as a virgin, I'm now widowed. Should I find a virgin after my wife dies? That's question number one. Question number two, it looks to me that things that are spiritual are attacked in the matters of adultery, which is why the church, 
when you know it's being talked about the woman went adulterous you know it's it has to do with adultery somehow but it amazes me how god when he had to choose in the genealogy of jesus he had to choose only women that were tainted by idolatry uh, like sexual sin i'm not saying that is the ideal but let's look, look through it to say if it was that that strictly important that jesus should be born why did Judah, okay, the, 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 the line, you know the story, right? Yeah, all the stories, look at all the women, and Rahab and all of these. Why were they pursued? All together, does it make me an outcast not to be one? While we are not supporting uh, living a reckless life, I know that women, la young ladies, the devil attacks that which brings salvation, or not, I'm not saying sexual, your, your virginity does, but it's seriously under attack. But God still saves people, even in that situation. It's a topic for discussion. Why did God pursue women who had been defiled under his genealogy? Thank you. And also, virginity is not the only important thing. Sometimes we prioritize it and say, after a honeymoon, you are now the same. Did I say something like it doesn't matter? No. I am saying while it's important, it's not the only important thing. That you can now break about and say, because after day one of your honeymoon, she is no longer a virgin. What more will she give into the marriage? Let's be virgins and more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me summarize what we heard. Uh, number one, the Bible values virginity. I think that is clear, it's biblical, it's something very, very important, which if you have not done it, don't do it. And uh, it's good for you. Number two, what we also heard, men love women who are virgins. They love to marry women who are virgins. That's the other thing. That's the reality uh, with uh, men. The most mischievous ones, the tin openers, they love marrying virgins. They want to marry virgins. Is it fair? It may not be fair, but this is how cruel this world is. It now makes you to be careful as a young lady if you have not met any of those things it makes you to be extra careful because we live in a world that is not fair then also what we have heard tonight is we must never underestimate the power of the cross Amen. if God can cleanse every sin except virginity, which means there is a limit to the power of the cross. Uh, when a person is in Christ, that person is a new creation, is a new creation where, except in virginity, uh, maybe we need to add that disclaimer and say he is a new creation, she is a new creation, except in matters of virginity. Uh, also, what we picked tonight is if you are a virgin, both male and female, it's important on both sides. If you have not done it, don't do it. Whether it will be discovered or it won't be discovered is between you and God. That's the most important thing. And also what we discovered tonight is we, if you are still a virgin, keep yourself a virgin. If you are not a virgin, keep yourself pure. Don't say to yourself, because I am not, let me continue. Stop right away. Don't do it until God gives you the right partner who will stay with you and be faithful to that one partner. May God 
be with us in our various circumstances and help us to make this commitment that, Lord, help me to be a Christian in my heart. Maybe, can I ask Mrs. Ispanda to come and pray for us as young people that the Lord can keep us until marriage or whatever circumstances that we will encounter. Uh, thank you. We can stand and have a closing prayer. Let us pray. Our dear God in heaven, we thank you for this privilege to be called your children. It is because of this privilege that we know that we can forgive ourselves because we know we have a father who forgives us. We would like to present the young people here. Some have already made some commitments in their hearts. May you seal those commitments with your Holy Spirit. Guide them in all that they do, guide their practices, and help them to stay pure as they are committing themselves to. Father, some have already made some mistakes. Allow them to forgive themselves as we know you are going to forgive them or we have already forgiven them. And Father, today going on, guide them in everything that they do and help them to know themselves and identify themselves with you so that they will know what to do and what not to do. And Father, some are still looking for life partners, guide their choices and help them further, lead them to where they will get people who will, who will help them to go to heaven. It is our prayer that through marriages that you are going to put them through, they will be found in heaven. Some are not yet looking for partners because they don't know what to look for. Help them further again and give them the right guidelines, what to look for and where to look for. And at the end of it all, when you come to take those that will have lived according to your principles, we wish to be in heaven as we are today here and many more that are not here because we have lived according to your will and according to your principles. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.